Hello everybody, most of you know me, my name's Steve Allen, welcome to another vlog for Self Defense Solutions and Dharma Way Dojo. Hey, today I'm right here by myself because I want to talk about something that's very, very important in the practice of your internal martial arts, whether you're doing whatever internal martial art it is. As you know, here at Dharma Way Dojo and Self Defense Solutions, uh, we have private classes and small groups and you can learn at your own pace. You can pick the arts you want to learn. You can just learn pure self-defense. We have certifications. There's five levels of self-defense um, uh, you can study from beginner to master instructor. And you can get, and like I said, just come and see us and, and you'll see how, how what we teach here is, is realistic. Our emphasis is on self-protection. It's not on sparring it's it's not on any of those things when we do a lot of forms but the form work is to help you to understand the self-defense applications from that form work and today when you're talking about internal martial arts and you need to know the difference between internal and external martial arts and and so that's not hard to figure out or look up but uh today we're talking about either tai chi bagua or xing yi which we teach here but you need to infuse even your external martial art with an internal movement. And that's hard for people to understand, especially in the West. So what I'm going to talk about just for a minute is the, the Dantian or elixir field, field, elixir field. It corresponds to an acupuncture point. As many of you know, I, I used to lecture Chinese medicine and and written about Chinese medicine and practice it here too. It is approximately three soon, four soon, I'm sorry, four soon, below, that's a measurement, below your navel. So if you take your fingers like this with your index finger and you put your index finger right at the lower part of your navel, where your little finger comes will be conception vessel four in acupuncture, often called guan yun which means gateway of origin. So by gateway of origin, we're talking about where you would go into a, a garden-like area. It's, it's where everything is woven, where everything originates, where everything spreads out all over the body. And in actuality, it's the balance point of the body. So half your weight's below it, half your weight is above it so in your mind you know even in a lot of martial internal martial arts movement they talk about sinking the chi to the dantian that sounds very esoteric but what does it actually mean well what it means is you want to put your awareness and the origin of all your movements there that all of your joints move because the dantian first moved so you don't do this and nothing else happens in the body. It's starting here. See? If I step out in Bagua to do a posture to do that first, to walk the circle, say I'm going to lift the cauldron and then move into dragon stretches its claws, I just don't take my arms and flap them over here. I have to sink my body at the Dantian. That causes a chain reaction within, within the body, within all the parts of the body, the muscles, the bones, the tendons, the ligaments, everything. And, and your E or your intent is to allow this to be symmetrical and to learn what that feels like. I have so many new students that start out and, and you tell them to step and they look at their feet. But Normally in the day's time, you don't look at your feet to walk. You, you can feel your feet. I often tell the students that when you go to bed at night, you don't have to check to see if your feet left you in the, in the night or something. They're always on the, on the bottom of your ankles, you know, below your ankles. So you have to feel that they're there. Part of learning how to defend yourself in the martial arts is to learn how to feel and then allow conditioned responses that you've already created within your body-mind matrix 
to take over. So there's no thought. I often tell the students to say, you have to think with your nervous system and feel with your mind. Instead of think with your mind and feel with your body, you actually think with your body or your nervous system and you um, feel with your mind. So that the mind and body become one. They, they become like you're, you're uh, like making tea, you know, where's the tea, where's the water, you know. So you become infused with that feeling and conditioned response. And it starts here at Guan Yun, gateway of origin. So that's pretty self-explanatory if you think about it. But you can't allow it to tense your muscles. So a lot of people move in such a way that they're tense all the time every day and they don't know what non-tension feels like. That's why you have certain standing postures. And and I teach a lot of, um, say, standing postures from each one. And you also have a standing posture in Xing Yi. And a lot of the students that come and they start doing that Santi Shi standing posture, they're really out of balance and they're really tense. So you have to go inside your mind and and let go of that tension and let it fall down, keep falling down through the Dantian. And then at your crotch, you have to make an archway. Okay, just like a gateway, you have to make an archway. Why is that? Because it's hard to it's hard to balance on a pyramid. It's hard to balance like this. You, you need an arch. So that's what sinking is about. And now you don't bounce up and down off of that. That's very important. So you want to take your dantian. If you're going to walk the circle, for instance, you would take your dantian and push it forward. It's always rolling, too, on its own axis. You have to use your imagination in that way. You have to use your visualization. I often picture a ball here, sitting in here, right under the center line from the crown of the head to the tip of the coccyx, called in Chinese the wailu. So what you're doing is you're, you're actually sitting down so that when I sink... Say, if I sink, I don't sink like this. Okay. If, if I sink down, I sink where the, the tailbone comes under like this. Then that aligns with the crown of the head as I pull the chin back. As the classics say, lift the head or lift the crown or, or lift the spirit to the gate of vitality, of uh, um, the bahui point which is the hundred meetings point. It's the, it's the meeting point of all the yang channels in the body. And it happens right here. So if you drew a, a line from this ear to this ear, and then a straight line this way, where they met would be Bahui. Hundred meetings, as that's called. And so you learn to align your Wailu and your Bahui. And that causes your spine to have to bend. So a lot of people get mixed up with like, what does it mean by straight spine? So they just hold themselves stiff, you know, like the straight spine, and they move around like Frankenstein. But that's not what you're supposed to do. What you're supposed to do is allow all the parts that move naturally to move naturally like they're designed to be moved. So if I'm sinking, you can see that the spine bends like this, the tailbone is here the crown of the head is here and they create a plumb line just like if you're drawing a, a bow and arrow there's still a plumb line on the bow itself the string is what bends your spine is the string see but it's not out like this it's not bent over it's not any of those things it's straight up and down and you pull the head back and up because then that makes the Erector spinae muscles on either side of your spine being a line here. If you do this, you're crimping it. So you, you sink down, you go crimp, you know. No, a lot of people do that, don't do it. It's down like this. And then you hollow the chest. Well, if you sink the Dantian and curve the Wailu point and align it with the Bahue point, 
then you'll have a hollow chest. You'll have a rounded chest. Okay, it's almost a slouch, except you're not bending over. Because the moment you take your dent in and flip it over one of your legs like this, you've locked up your back muscles, and that's tension, and you want no tension. You want to take the volition of movement out of every part of your body except your dantian. Then you visualize. In Bagua, I often have my students visualize that they're in a tube. Okay. So that if I came out this way, I'd hit the tube this way, and you see how I'm rounding this way? And then I hit the tube here, and every time I hit an object or I hit something that's stationary, the dantian rolls, which causes rolls through all the joints, which cause them to actually make the change, and Bagua is about change. It causes them to make the change. So when I come over here like this and I hit this tube, you see that I, it's done this now. See? <laughs> see how I'm circular all the time? I'm not just flopped out here. So that if I encounter an opponent, I'm not blocking them. or do, If I touch them, I, I create a, a circle. I create a rotation. You have to rotate because your, your hips and your shoulders are balls and socket joints. They rotate. The elbows and the knees are hinge joints. They hinge. They can't hinge till this rotates because this is the origin. So you run into your hips or your quad. Your quad is this inguinal crease right here. Your hip bones come up this high. Your dantian's down here. So now you can picture your, your, the ball inside of between your hip bones making these figure eight movements as it runs into the hip bone, you see. And notice how I don't push up like this. When I do this, I'm, the legs are roughly stationary compared to the upper part of the body at any one time. Then when the dantian runs into the hip, then that causes, that's the base of the spine and that causes the spine to whip in a rotation. It's within Xing Yi too. A lot of people don't even understand that in Xing Yi. But in Xing Yi, it's the same thing. You're doing a spiral within the body. So if I was doing Pichuan here or chopping fist, then what I would have to do is you start down here. This is where you first sink your Dantian. You'll see this in the classical movements of the five elements. You sink like this. Then I have to start like this, you see, where I'm coming up and out, and it runs into this hip. I don't jump back here to do it. I actually push this leg out as it rotates. So then at that point, you see, I can come out, you see, where I'm pushing this out. You see the spiral come up through the spine. And, see. So that eventually you'll recondition your body mind, your nervous system, and the firing orders of your muscles to where you'll have more of your parts working together at any one time. At any place where you cut that off, okay, is where the chi stops. Because chi is a measure of function in reality. If you just break it down to a measure of function and get out of the deeply esoteric, although you can go there, but for, for martial arts, just keep it simply in function. There's the body, mind, and spirit, but you're never going to understand the, the spirit until you unify the body mind okay so you everything that you're talking about within that esoteric chi mechanism has to be felt it has to be experienced it can't just be intellectualized it has to be brought up on into the the, the physical plane and demonstrated 
You know, uh, one, my, one of my first teachers would talk about when you're doing a form, I want to see the spirit of it. See, because you don't, you, you can see, the, uh, a real master can see the spirit of your form. You see, in the way you do it. He, he can see your mental attitude. He can see your, the control you have of your body. Because if you're controlling your body, you're controlling your mind. If you're controlling your body and your mind, then you're allowing your spirit to penetrate the body-mind matrix. See, that, those, those things are important. I, I've, like I said, I've had to actually fight for my life on the street against criminals as a former police officer and as a correctional officer. I was a uh, serious incident as a corrections officer. And you, you don't win with technique. <laughs> you, you win with the technique that your spirit embodies. You win every fight with your heart. You know what I mean? It, it's just with your heart, whether you want to. So you build up that aspect of yourself, that determination. In, in, in Chinese and in martial arts and in Chinese cosmology, uh, the, that particular courage or ability to have resolve is, is an aspect of the kidney chi. And so is fear. And they have to be balanced. You have to have common sense. So don't go sleep in the high, on the highway that you have no fear of a car, you'll get killed. <laughs> you know, that's stupid. But, but so fear is healthy, but, but when fear can hurt you is when you're in a self-defense situation and, and then your adrenaline freezes up. So, or causes you to freeze up generally or unable to act. So you have to simulate and visualize that attack over and over and over again so that when it actually happens, you're used to it. And it's proven psychologically through studies that most that people actually um, can't tell the difference that, between visualization and reality. And it's true. Um, think about how you suspend uh, disbelief when you watch a horror movie or something. Well, those horrible things or axe murderers on TV, they're not going to get you. They're, they're just pixels on the screen. But yet you, your heart rate goes up, you get scared, you know, because you're, you're entertaining yourself, you're buying into that. Well, you have to do a lot of that here, except this way you have to visualize yourself being successful. And you have to understand how to put everything together. So people say body, mind, spirit, and it just becomes some slogan they throw out. But here, you're actually going to have to show me with your body what you have done with your mind. Then you have to imbue that body mind that you've mixed up with the spirit, and it starts at Guan Yuan Gateway of Origin at the lower elixir field, Dan Tian. And so, when you come here for lessons, we'll start with that. We'll we'll teach you depending on what you want to learn. We'll start with that, but every movement's coming out of this. It's rotating. It's dropping. In Tai Chi, for instance, you, you start with sinking the Chi to the Dantian. You start with that. Then you move to Pong Lu Ji An. After that, you have um, this Pong Lu Ji An Sai Liu Kao Zhou. What they're talking about there is that if I sink my chi to the Dantian, then my intent allows me to align. The, the Dantian's rolling on its axis like this as it falls. Then you see how, and then when it stops, the knees stop, and the, and the uh, rule is they have to, you have to have some kind of arbitrary rules or you have no freedom. You know, too many rules, no freedom. Too much freedom, chaos. There's got to be balance, as the Buddha said, the middle way. So when you sink and your spine rolls like this, you're saying you're coming up like this, see? Then what you're actually doing is you're rotating the spine in such a way that you can 
you'll start to actually feel how the spine moves. Then when it hits here, the goal is to keep that movement going. When you start Tai Chi, for instance, you split Wu Chi. The Wu Chi is when yin and yang are together, undifferentiated. You take your yin and yang out. You split Wu Chi. You create yin and yang. You exercise that yin and yang. And once you do that, you, you make them in balance. And then at the end of the form, you bring them back together. That's what you should visualize. But what you see is most people get in a form, they stop. And then they move over here and they stop. That means there's no flow. There's no constant flow. You don't want to stop the flow from the Dantian. It never really stops. You just take, you just split it, exercise yin and yang, and bring them back together so that they can exist in harmony with each other. Because the Tao is about yin and yang. So if I sink, I don't bend my spine to start with, then when the knees stop, the Dantian's still going and it bends the spine and you align it then what comes from that well it runs up and down like this if you do it around the spine properly they call that the the microcosmic orbit but you're sinking it down and rising up from that so how do you rise up from that well you don't go ooh, 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 like this is not it if you push a ball under the water, you feel the pressure coming back. So if you sit down here and your Dantian hits your legs, now you have something that is more akin to a buoyancy. It's almost like you're, you're on water, but you're pushing it down like this. So then if you push your water down long enough, what will you start to do? You'll start to move on the water in a horizontal fashion, not a vertical fashion. So when this comes down like this and then the spine moves you see the spine starts to straighten slightly this way and i'm pushing the dantian around and it's moving the spine and then that's moving the shoulder so i don't lift the muscles of the shoulder the shoulders rotate then i move the dantian in you draw it in an then you're pushing it outwards so from sung, that's that sinking down feeling. It's called sung. It means to sink to the lowest place naturally. You have pong, which is the upward and expanding movement depending upon sung to exist. Then I've turned sung and pong into the next energies, which is what? Pong, lu, which is to roll back. Ji, which is to squeeze to a point. And on, which is to push down and up at the same time. Then when that happens, when those four are done as you're stationary like that, remaining aligned, then you can turn the Dantian, hit the hip. And once this Dantian runs into the hip and rolls, then you can see that the spine rolls. Now, when I teach martial arts, you, there, you don't just get out here and move all around everywhere. You have lines, you have parameters that you must stay within. Or you don't learn Tai Chi as a martial art then. And Tai Chi is a martial art. Sorry to bust your bubble, but it is. So when you come down like this and I turn, you see where this knee, shoulder, and arm is right here? It's in a line here. It's a line here. See, so when it comes down here, it spreads. And as it spreads, I rotate it. And as I rotate it, the rest of my body rotates with it. Then it, it rotates this way. Then it comes over here and hits this line. So when I hit this particular, say this line right here, if I come over here and hit this line, I don't just go out here like this. This line is struck, and then there's an exchange. See, the exchange itself and I don't stay up right here like this. Okay. I turn like this. 
and then this foot comes down, then the Dantian sinks that, this foot, this knee doesn't move. Then I come out like this, hit that parameter, and as that happens, as the spine straightens, it pulls this knee straight. But then I don't step with that knee. Now I have to have an energy coming back into my body that I can use to, to create another movement or posture. So that when this hits like this, I don't step until this comes back. Then that caused it to come into my body and move this hip and this and this knee. So that I'm not moving volitionally. I'm moving due to the energies that are coming and going towards my center. And that helps you in self-defense tremendously. Now, that may sound complicated. It may sound complex. This may sound like a long lecture or whatever. But if you're really interested in it, that's how you do it. You, you don't get something for nothing. It's not a vending machine of martial arts here. It's something you've got to grow. It's something you have to cultivate. That's why you study martial arts to start with, for self-cultivation. If you don't have the sauce or wherewithal or oomph to do that, then, you know, go somewhere else and you'll just run around and ego trip all day. But, the, but, the, but you're not doing anything. You're, you're not causing a change to happen in your body mind matrix in your nervous system in the condition responses you make which in actuality affect your mind it affects your personality it affects everything about you. you'll have more confidence but it won't be a false confidence because you know it's one thing to believe it's another thing to know do you believe because you had to convince yourself to believe or do you know and when you know, you have evidence. Physical, palpable, visceral evidence. And, and if you get a black belt status here, and believe me, it's not necessarily easy to do it, but you'll have evidence that you can do it, you'll have confidence that you can do it, and you'll know that you can do it. So I'm not giving you a black belt. Learning, a, getting a black belt here is the same as being confirmed about something you already know. And it's like a rubber stamp. So you already know it so good, I'll rubber stamp you because you can prove to me that you know it. That you don't just have to falsely believe. It's not a cult. Okay? So that's very important. Thank you for your time. Thanks for visiting our blog. Stay tuned and watch... Um, uh, this website and get a lot more tips on the martial arts and hey give me a call write me an email whatever you want to do to discuss it I'll be glad to answer any questions and you can come over and get two free lessons and I think you'll enjoy it and I'll see you inside the dojo